good afternoon lordsies and ladies so today we are doing a little bit of dry stone walling um, as I say in all my videos this is the way that I've wall I've, well, I've been doing it this way for 21 years so please don't give yourself repetitive strain orders disorders on your thumbs telling me that I'm a terrible waller because this is the way it works for me I get paid off my jobs and it walls stay up when I build them like this so uh, what we have here is a wall that's approx well it's at least 200 years old because all this stone came from there uh, quarry that was shut down in the 1880s um, so this is really ecologically friendly because the stones moved 40 yards um, and the wall matched the wall on the other side of the lane here as you can see that wall there um, but this wall uh, the there wasn't many throughs in it uh, so the throughs tie the two side two faces of the wall together so if you don't put the throughs in the wall bellies out so this wall was like ruined it was all over the place um, it'd been repaired um, left to ruin repaired again so the client um, has got um, a nimble little canine that likes to jump out. So we thought we'd repair the wall, uh, make it a uh, decent height again, so the dog can't jump over. And it also perpetuates these skills that are dying out now, because people of this generation must be a lot wiser, thinking, I don't want to be moving all this stone and busting a sweat and busting my back on my fingers to put some money in my pocket. So what we do with the wall is we've taken everything out um, and the original wall was sat um, maybe about six inches narrower than what we've put our footing in here. So what we've done is we've made a wider footing. So with a dry stone wall footing, um, you want the base of your wall to be a third of the height of the wall. So here we've got a, a wall at 1100 mil um, so just over a meter so the bottom of the wall is 45 centimeters so that gives ample width in the base of the wall to support all the wall above it and we walled the frames so as you, you have a little gander at this you can't just see it really because of the uh, the support but the, the the cross section of the wall is in an A shape and when you look at anything in nature uh, mountains, every, everything's an A shape um, because it this structure, rigidity and strength when things are in an A shape so um, this is how dry stone walls are built and this is how they've been built for well it's the, it, it's the second um, oldest um, profession in humanity the first being prostitution um, but I don't think people will pay me for my tricks of my trade so I thought I'd have a do at walling all them years since and it's paid off now so, um, so you, when you've got the A shape the gravity will uh, exert forces down that air shape so down each face of the stone a face of the wall we've got a lot of pressure going down so if we didn't put a wider footing uh, or a wider foundation than the width of the wall all that pressure is going down and this bottom course here will tend to, um, to start tipping and wiggling all over the place especially on a sandy um, uh, sub base that we're building on here so with dry stone walls if you excavate down um, so when you look at this stone we've got widths varying from like an inch three inches two inches so if you take an average of a lot of the stones that you've got you can build um, the depth depth of your uh, footing of the wall to an average of your stone stone thickness so we've got our 45 centimeters there 450 mil uh, and what we've done is we've we've extruded our footing about four inches either side of the of the bottom of the wall so when our wall's built and it's finished and we've got our coping stones on all that force that's pushing down through the face of the wall it can't tip this, these foundation stones up so you've got a much more stable and rigid foot into the base of your wall and your wall will stay up um, so what we've done is we've dug down about three inches lower than where we 
started building the wall and this shows it perfectly so that's our original ground level we've dug down about three inches and then we've just put a wide course of footing stones 600 mil wide and we'll do that across the whole length of the wall uh, so then we've so what we've done then is you we've well the way i do it is you put a string line up on the straightest section of the wall so going into that gate post up there we've put our first course in on the string line when we get to this, this end of the wall the wall's just curving round so this is the last of the straight section and then when this section's built we can curve this section of the wall round into that gate post there um, so we know we've got a straight run of about eight meters here going up to that gate post um, so we can set the string lines up after our first course set the frames up and we'll make sure that they're plumb because otherwise we'll be building cockeyed and then the forces will be um, the forces won't they'll be unbalanced and the wall will come down so when we've got our foot in stone we put foundation in then we've got our first course in line with the wall in frames and then we've got if you just have a quick look at the frame i've put some marks here so at these marks is where our course of three stones are going to be so the three stones are just basically stones that will span the width of the gap and when you get a lot of weight on top of these uh, three stones that exerts a force down it stops the wall from bellying out so it ties both faces of the wall together so a third of it ideally um, depending on the height of the wall uh, you want your threes in about every meter and you put I put them in courses and you can't just see because that wall's covered in moss but if we have a closer look at that wall you'd be at a spot where he's put his through stones in 200 250 years ago so we've come up um, so we've walled up to where our first course of through stones in is and this is called the primary lift so the primary lift goes from the foundation stones up to your first course of throughs and then you've got your secondary lift up to where my next course of throughs are going to be and we're not quite sure uh, depending on what kind of stone we've got left quite a popular technique in this area on the Yorkshire Lancashire border is once we've got to the finished wall height we'll back put another course of uh, through stones on before we put the capping stones on but looking at the pile of stone, um, there's not a massive amount of in, And as I said, that's one of the reasons why the original wall collapsed. So we might miss out that top course of throughs and just wall up and put the coping stones on. Uh, yeah. So my particular technique of wall is our wall to the string lines. Um, so then I just find it a lot easier to get my stones in. Um, uh, dry stone walling is like when you when you start walling you're, it's like hand, handwriting everyone has their own particular styles and as long as the wall stays up there's nothing wrong with that style of walling um, so uh, the tricky bit if you haven't done any walling before is you want to try and get all your bigger meteor stones in the base of the wall in that primary lift because that adds stability um, strength and rigidity to the finished form of the wall if we were to um, start start walling, you know, with some small stone, you know, we've got we've got a lot of we've got a lot of space in the middle there, which we're filling we're putting with these filling stones. So what we want to do is try and get as many bigger stones in that primary lift that can reach into the wall, and then there's more friction with the course on top to compress that wall and make it a solid structure so once we've got that uh, as courses of walling in we're left with the voids in the middle um, and what we do with the voids in the middle is we'll get the round here we call them filling stones around this part of the woods and what we do with them is we just pack them into the voids and ideally I've read somewhere way back when 
uh, that the ideal wall will only have 10 percent air gaps in between the stones which means that uh, each of these voids has been packed out as thoroughly as it can and we've got a solid structure then so so that's the primary lift up to the first course of throughs so we'll come back in a few hours time maybe tomorrow and we'll be up to the second uh, the, the secondary lift and the second course of through stones in and we shall have a look at how the walls coming together after the day before um, we promised you we'll come back once we got this secondary lift done so that's our secondary lift going from the, uh, the, the, the through stones from the primary lift so we've walled the secondary lift up to our second course of through stones uh, so the more observant of you uh, amongst you you'll see that these um, these through stones are narrower than the through stones below uh, that's because um, as we were saying yesterday um, the natural A shape of the wall means it's each course that we come up the wall stepping in more narrow so um, is, a, is a well I should say um, through the trade we've um, we call these knee bangers so these bits that are stuck out here knee bangers because literally you clatter your knee into them um, which isn't a problem on like a garden wall um, but when you if you're field walling cows and sheep and livestock tend, tend to come up and they'll rub the bums on them and that can cause the wall to move so uh, some some wallers will knock these off uh, flush with the face of the stone so what we're going to do once this job's complete is because like we we're saying is like um, a bouncy canine we'll just come off with a chisel and we'll break them off because um, you know, if you've got a collie jumping up on there it might be easy for scrabbling over so we're going to knock these knee bangers off but if we just go around the other side of the Harris fencing and we'll be on the other side of the wall so we've been walling from the, the garden side um, uh, which is fine once you get quite proficient at building walls because you know what you're looking out for and you can feel with your hands to if there's a void bit where you put the stone on you can feel if there's a void underneath that stone that goes on so um, you can get a better idea of what the, the wall's constructed like so we can see the footing of the wall here that we've put in and then the, the bigger uh, foundation courses of stone are on and then as the wall goes up, you can see how the, the stones get more narrower as they're going up. Um, so when this wall's done, we've got a spoil that we took out here. So we'll heat this up over the bottom of the wall. And then on the ears, frame and um, frost and what have you, that'll compact. And we can compare a brand new wall to the wall that's perhaps 250 years old. And they've done exactly the same. So we did a wall repair here, maybe 18 months since. Um, is this where, where the farmer put the the, uh, the the straining post on his fence? It pushed the corner of the wall over. So we rewalled this up, um, and you can see that how the the wall of 250 years ago. He's put his big stones in the bottom, and as we excavated this before we built it the foundation stones came out about six inches so nothing's changed in 250 years and um, you can extrapolate that further uh, you know walls have been being built for well we've been in this form for 200,000 years um, so you could like you could say walls have been built stone stacked for 200,000 years and the, and the, the um, traditions and the craftsmanship hasn't changed that much in all that time all we've changed is we've got fiberglass handles on as hammers now um, so what we will do is we just go back down to the other side Uh, 
um, and we shall come back when we put those on and we shall have a look at how it's done. So we're back doing a little bit of wall and a bit of stone stacking. Um, we've got that first uh, straight stack done. Um, we've got the curve round uh, just to accommodate the, the boundary line of the property going back into this fence. Uh, so we just have a look at the wall end and um, explain how that's put together. So the foundations are exactly the same, they protrude um, beyond the uh, the first course of stone. Uh, but the closer, um, the more eagle-eyed amongst you, will see that what we've done is we've, we've have stones reaching into the wall, the wall end height. So these uh, are called headers and stretchers. So the, um, the headers uh, are like three stones that span the width of the wall. Um, and they're stacked on top of um, stretchers. So the stretchers reach into the wall. So we alternate between headers, um, sorry, stretchers and headers uh, all the way up. And that just adds a solid structure uh, because the weakest bit of the wall is the wall end. Um, and you'll, you'll regularly see the, the more beady eyed amongst you that um, you'll, you'll get movement in wall ends, some like really old wall ends. Um, and you can usually diagnose the issues um, as not having adequate header and stretchers in the wall end. So you can see how that one, that protrudes maybe two foot into the wall. Um, and when you're building up against a gate post or something, always try and have like a fingers, a fingers width between the wall end and the stone because inevitably um, it's a natural structure. Um, and dry stone walls allow for the movement um, over years. I mean, that, that wall's been up, what, 250 years maybe? And it won't have, uh, it'll have moved over that time as the, uh, the ground, um, you know, swells and contracts seasonally, moves, tree roots move it. So the wall, so the dry stone wall allows a degree of movement, um, uh, but we don't want a massive amount of movement, so we accommodate out by using the headers and the stretchers. Uh, so we've got that this side done, so we're up to the wall height here. And that's uh, our top stone, so we will come back in a little while and we'll have a look at how the top stones go on. So we've got the final stretch of wall to build now, up to that gate post. And so we've got like, the ground's level here, but then it does the slope up um, towards the gate post which can, um, be a, can be a bit of a head scratcher if you haven't come, uh, approached it before. So it might be easy if we get on the other side of the wall to show how the wall put together. So, exactly the same. The foundation stone protrudes further than the wall and we accommodate for the incline, well, I accommodate through my style of walling, uh, but this is uh, it's a good way of doing it, doing it this, and whatever your style of walling becomes, uh, it's, uh, it's probably um, uh, provident to, uh, to follow something similar. Um, so, as the course is running, you can see how We've, we've, we've walled down to smaller stones there um, and then when we've reached a point where we disappeared into the ground we've put a bigger stone in and we can set our next course off there so you can see where I've started my next course there's two courses of stone there so basically the wall's stepping up as it's going up uh, up the, uh, the contour, up the gradient uh, and then once you've got that foundation coat, that sorry, that, that base course in, then we can just continue our courses uh, in following the string line. So that, that causes another issue uh, as regards your through stones. Because uh, if we were to carry on uh, building it level, we'd have a, a different height that the through stones are going in. So we have got the through stone there, and uh, we've got a through stone there. Uh, another one there, so um, and that's our next three stone. So what we do is, as we're climbing up, uh, our three stones are going at the same height through the wall. So uh, 
So what we've done is, um, as we run our courses in, on each course, we'll put another through stone, so they're stepping up, but they're still parallel with the ground. So when I get to this point here, which I marked on the, um, um, on the walling frame, I know that when I put a another course of stone on there, my through stone will be at the, uh, the height that I want it to be. And then as we've, and once we've walled up to the, up to the walling frame, then I can just carry my courses in. Um, but the, because the wall is higher here um, than at the base, if you have a bird's eye view, the, the cross section of the wall will be like that. Um, sorry, no, the other way, so it's like that. So, um, so we are just like continuing our courses in by running the string line around the frame and then I've run it about, it's at about two, three meters back. So as long as, um, as long as my string line is touching the face of the stone, I know that I'm coming up at the correct gradient then and there's going to be a standard cross section of the wall as we go right along. Um, and exactly the same. So when we have, uh, when we're putting the, the stones into the wall, they're reaching into the wall instead of r running in thin, thin courses along because each stone that goes on top of there and there is more friction and there's less movement in the wall. Um, so we'll bob back in a little while, um, just as we, before we're putting the top stones on. And the job is almost done. So we've got the, the wall is up to height. Um, we've explained how we do the curve and the wall ends. So we've just exactly the same. Um, we've constructed the wall end here and we've got the top stones on. Uh, so the top stones, yeah, have a look. Yeah, here. I you were going to see those. But, um, right, so the, the top stones, um, they provide, um, they're multi-functional uh, for the wall. So what the top stones do is they act almost like a top course of throughs. So they tie both sides of the wall together and compress down. So that that, that top section of wall um, is under compression. And there's, um, there's, there's like a decent weight holding the wall down. Um, and they also um, provide a deterrent. So if you're like a sheep, doing your sheep thing, when you look up there, it's a deterrent because you're not jumping over a wall that's this high, you're jumping over a wall that's down this high. So it acts as like an extra deterrent for the livestock um, to stop them from veering over onto the, the greener grass on the other side of the wall. Um, so with the top stones, we fasten them on so none of them move. So how we do that is we put them on in like two to three feet sections and we've saved the best till last and so we put the two to three feet sections of wall in and what we try and do is to keep that a nice flat top line um, because there's an old wall that told me uh, that a badly top wall can make a great uh, wall look height so I uh, always try especially on like a a residential job like this to keep a nice straight top line and just finishes the wall off beautifully. So, um, so these particular top stones are 10 inches. You can have them whatever, uh, whatever size you want. Um, and there's various uh, regional methods in the UK of putting top stones on. So we're on the Yorkshire Lancashire border and this is like a field walling. So field capping, sorry. So this is uh, how we generally do it. Um, so what you can do is you can put, you can just set your top stones on, but then you've got movement in them. So when a cow comes along, rubbing its neck, um, it can end knocking the top stones off, and then that can damage the wall because there's no compression in this top top section of wall going down to our the top of the secondary lift. So this is the tertiary lift now. Um, so we, we put the, we set our top stones on, uh, adjacent to each other, keep that nice flat top line. It, it can vary an inch or so, and you won't notice the difference there. 
but you try and keep it within an inch or so of your line. And then with the final top stones, so we have got our last top stone here. So what we do, we do it in sections. So we put like four or five top stones on. We've got four there. And an old, an old farmer taught me this technique and it works incredibly well. So put it on. Yeah, trust the old tatty bit of wood and your knocking stick. Sometimes take some knocking in, manoeuvring, and we're nearly there. Uh, try it for a different angle. Oh, there we are, making progress now. Sometimes it'd be a lot easier with a sledgehammer. We've got a quite a big hammer there. So we're touching there. So what we can do, we can get our cold chisel. And just for aesthetics, we just take that little bit off. A little bit more. Get a final few taps. that and stiffen that wall top up so when the dog jumps on top of it or when the cows come up the lane nothing's going to be getting knocked off and what you'll find is you get little voids where the water can get into it well the amount of stuff can get into the wall so what we do with that is we get some little filling stones Exactly the same stuff as we were putting in the uh, the middle of the wall. And we just pack that out. You don't have to do this, but I think it looks a lot better to the finished the finished project. So there we are. And the last bit of the job. Put that string line off. And. There we have our finished walls. So that's how we build dry stone walls. So if you've got one in your own uh, in your own property, um, watch this video a few times. Get a few books that are out there um, and have a go yourself because it's not rocket science. Um, anyone can do it, and they have been doing it for the last 150, 200 thousand years.